Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, today I will speak about uh, Zero Trust and uh, this involves uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Azure AD, uh, well, Microsoft Azure uh, Zero Trust. So remember, this is for my own education and also those of you uh, who want to learn uh, more about uh, cybersecurity, you're welcome to listen to my uh, my studies. <laughs> so, zero trust. What is zero trust? Zero trust is a security strategy that assumes breach and verifies each request as though it originated from an uncontrolled network, meaning you know, it doesn't trust anything or anybody. You know, if you need to have access to any resource, you need to, uh, you will not be trusted because you need to be authenticated and authorized. And there needs to be accountability for whatever you need to do uh, inside the perimeter. It is not a product or a service, but rather an approach in designing and implementing a set of security principles. These principles include uh, very explicitly, which means always authenticate and authorize based on all available points. Use this privilege access. Limit user access with just in time, sorry, and just enough access risk-based adaptive policies and data protection. Assume breach, minimize blast radius and segment access. Verify end-to-end -end encryption and use analytics for visibility, threat detection and defense improvements. Instead of blindly trusting everything behind the corporate firewall, the zero trust model teaches us to never trust, always verify. Zero trust adapts to the complexities of the modern environment, embracing the mobile workforce and protecting user accounts, devices, applications, and data wherever they are located. Implementation and readiness. A zero trust approach should extend throughout the entire digital state and serve as an integrated security philosophy and end-to-end -end strategy. Consider organizational requirements, existing technology implementations, and security stages when planning and executing a zero trust security model. Move away from a trust by default perspective to a trust by exception one. An integrated capability to automatically manage exceptions and alerts is crucial for detecting threats and responding effectively. Microsoft's zero trust strategy has adopted a zero trust strategy to secure corporate and customer data. The implementation focuses on strong user identity, device health verification, validation of app health, least privilege access to resources and services. Now, integrating Azure AD with Zero Trust. Integrating it, uh, Microsoft Zero Trust principles with Microsoft Azure Active Directory is crucial for building a robust security framework. Let's explore how this integration works. Azure AD is Microsoft's cloud-based identity and access management service. Mm -hmm. It provides features such as single sign-on authentication, conditional access, 
passwordless and multi-factor authentication and automated user provisioning. Uh, just a note, I will create another tutorial explaining how to implement the technologies that I just uh, mentioned. Moving on, uh, further explanation about SSO, um, sorry, SSO conditional access, uh, passwordless, uh, and multi-factor authentication and automated uh, provisioning, user provisioning. Single sign-on authentication. So SSO allows users to log in once and gain access to multiple applications without needing to re-enter credentials. Key points, user experience. Users enjoy a, a seamless experience as they move between different applications, meaning, you know, they don't have to uh, type in or uh, put in another uh, password every time they have to go use a different uh, uh, application. So this is something that it's, uh, it's an advantage. Security, SSO reduces the risk of password related vulnerabilities. You know as well, that uh, many users uh, that just use the same password or some uh, vulnerable password, you know, their their pet's uh, name or whatever vacation they spent uh, in, you know, during the year last year. I mean, easy stuff. Protocols, common protocols for SSO include SAML, security, assertion, markup, language, and OAuth. And also, by the way, I will create a video explaining SAML and OAuth. Like I said, SAML and OAuth explain briefly because it's not in depth. SAML security assertion markup uh, language uh, authentication process. SAML is primarily used for authentication, user identity verification. When a user logs in, SAML verifies their identity and provides a digital signature. Access to multiple services. Once authenticated, the user gains access to various services. Example, corporate intranet, Microsoft Office, under a single digital signature. Centralized user management. Network administrators can manage users centrally, allowing one password to unlock all necessary services. Typical workflow. Request, user clicks login. Validation, SAML and, and the identity provider authenticate the user. Login, user enters username and password. Token creation, if valid, a SAML token allows access to the service provider. SAML is specific to a user and facilitates seamless information exchange between service providers browsers and identity providers. OAuth or open authorization. Authorization process. OAuth focuses on authorization. Passing authorization. It allows passing authorization from one service to another without sharing usernames and passwords. Time saver for users in environments where employees switch application, applications frequently, OAuth enables seamless transition without re-entering credentials. Example, an employee with an active Google account can use the same credentials to access services like Hootsuite, <laughs> which I think sounds funny, uh, SurveyMonkey, Microsoft 365, Salesforce, and more. How OAuth works, OAuth 2.0 is the most common version used today. So just to make a note of that. OAuth uh, acts as a critical time saver, allowing users to jump between apps without repeated logins. Protects usernames and passwords while granting access. Enables efficient access to web-based programs. In summary, SAML verifies identity and offers access to multiple services. 
while or facilitates authorization between services without compromising security. So there's your difference. One is offers uh, access to multiple services and the other one, or facilitates authorization between services without compromising the security. Okay, so don't forget about that. Azure AD SSO. Okay, provides SSO or, or Azure AD provides SSO capabilities for cloud and on-premises applications. Conditional access. Conditional access is a policy-based approach to controlling access to resources based on specific conditions. Key features. Contextual policies. Define access rules based on factors like user location, device health, and signing risk. Granularity. Apply policies at the app level, user level, or group level. Adaptive authentication. Trigger additional authentication steps. Example, MFA. Based on risk assessment. Azure AD conditional access. Configure policies to enforce access controls dynamically. Passwordless authentication. Passwordless aims to eliminate traditional passwords for improved security and user experience. Methods, Windows Hello, biometrics authentication using face recognition or fingerprint. Microsoft Authenticator app, push notifications on QR or QR codes for sign in. FIDO2 security keys physical keys for strong authentication. Benefits, reduce risk, no reliance on easily compromised passwords. Uh, user convenience, faster and simple and simple, simpler sign in. MFA, MFA adds an extra layer of security by requiring users to provide two or more forms of authentication. Factors, something you know, password pin, something you have, phone, smart card, security key, something you are, biometrics. Uh, Azure AD supports various MFA methods, including SMS, phone call, and mobile app verification, verification codes. Automated provisioning, user provisioning, sorry. User provisioning automates the process of creating, updating, and disabling user accounts. Azure AD provides automated user provisioning for cloud applications. Benefits, efficiency, streamline user onboard and offboarding. Okay. Consistency, ensures accurate and consistent user data across system systems. Integration connects Azure AD with HR systems and other identity resources or sources. Remember, these concepts play a crucial role in securing user identities and access in zero trust environment. Azure AD plays a pivotal role in implementing zero trust by ensuring strong user identity and access controls. Foundational integrations. These integrations leverage Azure AD's built-in security capabilities to protect customers. SSO and publisher verification. To enable SSO, consider publishing your app in the Azure AD app gallery. Being a verified publisher ensures customers trust and simplifies app integration into their tenant. For mobile apps, use the Microsoft Authentication Library and a system browser for seamless SSO. User provision, managing identities and access for large organizations can be challenging. 
synchronize user information and access between your application and Azure AD to streamline processes. Advanced integrations. These take your solution a step further with enhanced security capabilities. Risk, signals, and alerts. Oops, oh my goodness, did I go too far? Sorry about that. Risk, signals, and alerts. Share risk signals between your solution and Azure AD. And has enhanced customer trust by demonstrating alignment with zero trust principles. Custom solution scenarios. Explore advanced scenarios that align with your specific use case. Azure's, Azure ID's flexibility allows you to tailor solutions to unique organizational needs. And this concludes uh, my study session and I will get you more details about the uh, implementing uh, the different solutions for Zero Trust. Thank you. Have a good day.